everyone. This is ICO Talk. My name is Yelena. And today I have Denis Popov, CEO and founder of Crypto, and Maxim Hermanso, uh, Chief Operating Officer of Crypto. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. Nice to see you. Okay. So please, first of all, tell us about Crypto. What is it all about and what's the main idea behind the project? Sounds good. So let me take that uh, question. And um, before I speak about the project, let me uh, give you a little uh, context about uh, myself and our team. Um, I started uh, my career uh, as a trader on Wall Street back in 1999. Uh, that was um, the time when, uh, due to regulatory changes, um, the market was quickly uh, evolving from the old um, specialist-based model when you used to have Guys jump up and down on the floor of the exchange that you've seen in the movies, I'm sure. Uh, to um, the electronic model, where many new exchanges were opened up to compete with the same um, for, for the same trading volume as uh, you know in the securities that were listed on the main exchange. Uh, as you can tell, this is very similar to what's currently happening in the crypto world, where you have now over 300 exchanges essentially competing for the same crypto trading volume. Uh, so uh, a few years into my career, I developed a number of um, trading strategies. Uh, I really wanted to scale them up, but I had a big constraint. Uh, you know, as a human, you can simultaneously follow price action, maybe three to four stocks at any given time. If you try to look at more than that, you start missing... Um, things you just you just can't physically do it and you know there's a total of 8,000 securities listed on the exchange and on any given day hundreds of them have profitable opportunities that would fit into my criteria and obviously I want to trade them all so I set up a trading team and started teaching people to trade um, that worked uh, but it had mixed results and you know my next thought was well why not trade Try to teach computers how to trade. That you know that that's back in the year 2006, and I did some searching. And after some time, um, I convinced a friend who, after a number of uh, engineering jobs at big banks in Wall Street, was taking time off playing uh, online poker professionally. Um, so we shook hands and started working on our first um, automated strategy. A few weeks into coding. He asked me, Dennis, well, very often in the same stock, I see orders to buy on one exchange uh, higher than orders to sell on another exchange. Mm -hmm. This is really interfering with my work. <laughs> and we looked at each other and, you know, had asked us, a, asked us the same question. Let's try to monetize this. So we did a very quick pivot and a few weeks later uh, rolled out our first trading strategy, which is now known as Exchange Arbitrage. It was an immediate success. Not many people were doing it back then. And um, the second month we were uh, traded over 100 million shares. At, you know, that's four something billion dollars turnover, which is a you know, significant number, I guess, and <laughs> even, even in today's... Uh, uh, day made. So, um, you know, to this day, I'm still partners with Gene. He is our CTO and, uh, you know, co-founder of uh, Apple Trading Technologies, our current trading operation. Um, over the years, the market have has evolved. Uh, it has completely transformed from what it was to you know, fully being fully electronic, where New York Stock Exchange we used to trade a hundred percent of volume, now only trades about ten percent. So everything, uh, all the other trading is being done on fifty different exchanges. Um, you know, we obviously remained an active participant in the market, and uh, uh, we added additional strategies and. Uh, as we did that, we had to expand. So we built a great team of engineers and uh, scientists who uh, created a world-class trading platform and uh, currently create a number of profitable uh, and competitive uh, trading strategies in uh, U.S. equities, futures, uh, equity options, and the price. 
Okay, okay. But still, if we try now to compare crypto with other, uh, say, similar projects on the market today, what will be the key differences and key advantages uh, comparatively to them? Well, that, that was the kind of the second thing uh, is last year we started looking at the, you know, I opened the trading interface for the first crypto exchange. And I had a flashback. I haven't seen uh, activity like this in 15 years. Uh, you know, things are moving very slowly. There is no, or very few algorithms there. So right away, I was cool. I, I told the team that this, you know, we obviously have to add this asset class because it's very, you know, the, 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 the opportunities are plentiful. There are no HFT shops trading here. And, uh, Another thing that struck me as we started researching the market is uh, because we kind of have to understand you know, what we need to focus on. There are many different things that we could try our strategies uh, to. So we, in doing our research, we realized that there are no tools available for traders to understand why and how things are happening. So on any given day, you have the market move up or down 10%. And... I would not have any understanding why it happened, how it happened. You know, it was basically a vacuum, and you know, these tools are plentiful in the conventional uh, uh, market. So we decided to, grip, to create crypto uh, to essentially offer uh, what the tools that we built, or some of the tools that we built, uh, to traders to remain uh, competitive in. Uh, the uh, crypto markets that, that you know we've been watching now for nine months, and we can tell you, especially this year, it's been very pronounced that it's becoming more and more efficient every month. Mm -hmm. so the opportunities are fewer and fewer, and are you know you need to be faster to capture them, and that trend we you know will continue. So mm -hmm. uh, now we can talk about crypto platform, and I'll, I'll let Max yeah. explain. Yeah, so in go. simple yeah. terms, uh, crypto is a uh, or the uh, quantitative uh, crypto trading platform, which will uh, offer proprietary signals and trading strategies and couple that with low latency execution on the major exchanges. Mm -hmm. Our signals and strategies will come mainly from three sources. Uh, first being uh, market data analysis, both on uh, specific exchanges and aggregated across all exchanges. Second being sentiment analysis of structured and unstructured data, that being uh, social media feeds, Twitter, Bitcoin talk, Reddit, Telegram, what have you, and structured such as news or press releases. And the first, third source uh, would be the on-chain activity analysis, which is specific to blockchain, basically this analysis of uh, first transactions happening on different blockchains, and second, basically wallet activities, both creation, uh, movement on large wallets, like basically whale watching activity or watching their uh, exchange wallets and, and, and their assets which are not in or out of that. And uh, basically that's, that's the uh, signals and strategies part and it's all uh, going to be wrapped on three levels but from the basic level where you have uh, visual signals and manual execution to the top level of platform where you have fully automated uh, low latency execution and fully automated HFT trading strategies basically uh, on this platform. So that's quick. Mm -hmm. The formal part, formal description, and I uh, will repeat what Denny said. And your description would be that basically that's the tool for uh, current crypto traders to remain profitable and competitive for the years to come in, in the face of uh, ever rising competition. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I see. Uh, but uh, whom still you consider to be your main competitors on this market? Well, competitors. Truly, we um, have yet to see uh, in crypto space uh, our true competitor, which would provide the same value proposition. Having said that, having said that, of course, there are a group of companies, let's say, or different types of companies, which provide at least part of our value proposition and uh, at least partially compete with us. And the most most hyped, probably the most well known, are mostly the ICOs, which are also, you know, at least they claim to provide some kind of signals and strategies. You probably heard of, about you know, a number of them. Uh, but actually, this is their, despite being the most hyped part, uh, the most hyped group, that's the group where we're least concerned about. Because if you, you know, look closer underneath what they're doing, so talking about proprietary signals and strategies, uh, they're aiming to provide mostly very basic level stuff because you know, very few of the teams have you know, real, real experience to build that and to construct 
uh, real, you know, really profitable uh, proprietary signals and strategies, you have to have a lot of experience, and you could only get that in traditional markets, because crypto markets is you know, a couple of years they were, ago, they were non-existent. So most of these platforms, they're aiming to provide some kind of crowdsourced uh, signals and strategies, and we're not sure that that's going to you know, go very well, and there will be a lot of value created this way, or value being profitable trace. Why? I'll give you an example of Quantopian, you probably heard about Quantopian, is their largest in the world uh, platform where you know, crowdsourcing okay. uh, quantitative algorithmic trading strategies. So they've been around for five or six years. Uh, there are 120,000 something contributors. So over the years, they've written probably tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of different trading strategies. And if you want to guess how many of those got actually seeded and given money to trade to, can you take a wild guess? Uh, that's just 15. So out of hundreds, thousands of strategies over five years, only 15 of them were found to be worth you know, outside money. So, so that probably tell you something about you know, crowdsourcing business mm-hmm. strategies. And there are several other types of uh, companies. One would be that they're aiming to provide uh, execution platforms. You know, there is value in that, and there are quite a, a few of them, but that's the execution platform is only part of our value proposition. That's why we only you know, see them as only partially competing, competing with us. And there is another group of deeply specialized companies. Actually, there are a few good, very good ones where probably we shall look at, for example, on sentiment analysis, Twitter, feed data. Uh, they're really good you know, and good companies, but that, once again, that's only part of our value proposition. Yeah. And they're, they're our fierce, fiercest, fiercest and you know, the competitors we are most worried about, actually, you probably don't even hear about them or you know, read about them a lot. These are our so-called colleagues from the uh, traditional markets, such as HFT space, who are you know, already here and they're coming you know, in larger numbers. And they're going to be the ones who will increase the efficiency of the market and takes all the profits away. And that's why actually you know, crypto was uh, designed to uh, provide tools for current traders to compete with these guys who are not even, you know, even there yet. Okay, okay, I see. Let's now speak about the ICO. Uh, first of all, please tell me the soft cap and the hard cap. Okay, the soft cap at the moment is 10 million USD and the hard cap is 25 uh, million, but that uh, with 70% of the tokens being sold. Mm-hmm. Okay, 25 million USD. Well, what for this particular sum? What will be the future uh, key steps of development after the ICO is finished? Okay. Well, basically, you know, uh, we have a, uh, a year which we took for ourselves to, to, to put this platform into operation, at least the initial version. And of course, you can develop you know, and add the strategies uh, for many years to come. So most of this sum will, will actually go as a development cost, uh, the limited development. Of course, there will be some marketing costs because we're building a customer-facing uh, facing platform, and there will be you know, regulatory, regulatory, some administrative. But the bulk of it, probably like 85%, that's this development cost. Because mm-hmm. we, we have built really, you know, very professional and profound platform, and you gotta have very good developers behind it. Okay. Infrastructure is another uh, actually yeah, large sure. line item that once we are operation and operational on a scale, and it will not be negligible. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And tell us more about the tokens of the platform. Uh, what will be the key functionalities of the tokens? Sure. Well, the token is the sole means of access to the platform. So it's used to pay subscription uh, on all three platform levels. Also, on the top two platform levels, we'll have staking requirements. So tokens are used, uh, are used to, to fulfill staking requirements. And given that the top platform levels will have a limited number of members, uh, the, at the very top level, we'll be introduced to what we call uh, dynamic staking or auctions, basically, where users will compete in real time, uh, beat the number of our tokens they are prepared to stake to get access to. Mm-hmm. So, basically, that's what's talking about. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let's for a second imagine the negative scenario. If you don't achieve even the soft cap, uh, what will happen with the project? Do you consider maybe any other traditional sources of financing? Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess uh, the soft cap um, is, you know, we, we could even probably not do an ICO and try to run the project uh, in, internally, but uh, the objective was to uh, attract the capital to spearhead uh, getting uh, to market and uh, start monetizing the opportunities and, and offer our users the ability to 
make money while the market is still inefficient um, because that time is very limited. Um, so, uh, of course, if we don't reach the soft cap, we'll return the funds and we'll but, decide on how to Yeah, but we, we will we'll proceed with, uh, with uh, a bit shy about that. But no, well, uh, platform, platform is going to happen. Is that the thing is that if we don't reach our soft cap, then have to, you know, to look for outside finance for VCs or other types. It's going to be much slower to take on you know, uh, different amount of time. That's what, that's what we're, uh, meanwhile, you know, the opportunities from the market will be going. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I see. And in general, what do you guys think about the perspectives of the ICO markets in the world? So well, let me take that question. Um, I, I, I find it actually, well, if you look at it, uh, you know, on its face value, and if you discard all the negativity, fraud, uh, and all the other, uh, again, bad things, so, so to say, uh, that are happening around um, this opportunity, uh, it, it's a different way for startups uh, to raise uh, early stage investment. Um, given the global nature of it and distributed nature of it, um, this genie is out of the bottle. It's not going away. You cannot change it, right? You can ban it uh, in China, but it will pop up somewhere else. So it, it's here to stay. Uh, how it will evolve? Uh, it's a great question. I, I think the sooner um, large governments and countries get together and, and build some framework to kind of make it easier for people to continue doing it, uh, doing what they're doing, but at the same time punish people for being fraudulent, the faster it will evolve. That's, that's my opinion. Okay. Okay, okay, I got it. And now just to sum it up, our usual question in very, very brief in one or two sentences, please. Why should I contribute to crypto? Well, if you're a crypto trader, or you consider yourself being one, and you want not to remain competitive and profitable in the years to come, basically your only chance is to, is to, to go to crypto. Now. <laughs> okay, Dennis, maybe you want to add something? I think Max said it very well. If you want a one sentence answer, that was it. <laughs> and if you want an hour long sentence, I can, of course, entertain you. <laughs> okay, okay, guys, then thank you very much for this interview and for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, and I remind you that today I have Dennis Popov, CEO and founder of Crypto, and Maxim Hermanso, Chief Operating Officer of Crypto. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch more interesting interviews on icotalk.tv. Bye bye.